Did you know that Snow Cone is Android 12's dessert name? While it's not official, Google ditched its dessert naming scheme for Android around two years ago, so unfortunately, no more tasty looking statues. But internally, Google engineers still follow the tradition, and within its source code, the abbreviation SC is sprinkled around, standing for Snow Cone. Just a fun fact I thought you should know. Today, we're going to look at every major change and new feature found within Android 12 thus far, and also quickly discuss any possible upcoming features. Currently, the latest release is Developer Preview 3, so any of these things discussed in this video could change and be removed entirely when the next update rolls out. According to Google's timeline, the first beta version of Android 12 should be released sometime this month, and I'll be one of the first to review it when it rolls out, so make sure to get subscribed with the notification bell turned on, because you're not going to want to miss out. When you first boot into Android 12 Developer Preview 3, there are a few things that will stand out to you. First is the notification panel. Here you'll find a ton of minor changes that improve the bigger picture. There is no longer a conversations or notifications text that separates your notifications from the quick setting tiles. The text within each notification has also been slightly moved to the right to make space for the apps icon, which now have circular backgrounds. The snoozing button has been added to the corner of each expanded notification for easier access. When you tap on an app's icon, it'll expand the notification. And whenever you have a stack notification, the counter is now a lot easier to spot thanks to a rounded colorful background. For the media player, you can limit the apps that are allowed to display media controls within the quick settings. Before, any app could bring up these controls as long as it plays sound in the background. Now within the settings, under sound and vibration, and then media, you can deselect any apps. or you can turn off the media controls altogether. On top of that, the media player takes up a lot more space. The artwork is bigger, and it follows the same accent color as the system, rather than trying to match the colors of the album artwork. I personally prefer the color changing music player, but I can see why they made the change just for a more uniform interface. Also, I'm not sure if you noticed, but when you have dark mode enabled, the background of the notifications or quick settings panel are no longer pitch black. Instead, it's a dark shade of gray. The same goes for the settings, the Pixel Launcher's app drawer, and a lot of other system pages. I know some people are pissed about this, so let's just cross our fingers and hope that this isn't the final decision. Another huge change that is a lot more obvious is the volume slider. They turned it into a thick ass pill. Uh, to me it looks ugly, I mean it's just too thick, but I do love the new animation that pops up whenever you switch between ringer modes. It looks really sick. However, the live transcribe button is still stuck with the old squarish design, so it's most likely a work in progress. I'm hoping they finally fix that dreaded expanded volume panel and maybe even make the volume slider a bit thinner. As for the pixel launcher, it's got a ton of new changes sprinkled around. When opening the app drawer, it now animates with rounded corners extending to the status bar. The discover panel is a lot less transparent with each article filling up the entire page instead of floating in the middle. And the Google logo is off to the left now and the snapshot icon is on the right next to your Google profile icon. There's a new 4x5 grid size option, which I think is perfect for small devices such as the Pixel 4a or Pixel 5. Everything is a lot more symmetrical and the icon size is perfect. And there's also an extra 4x4 option, which makes the icon smaller than the regular 4x4 option, also found within Android 11. My favorite change within the launcher though has to be the new and improved widget panel. It's genius. It has a more compact layout with every app's widgets automatically being collapsed, making it feel less busy and it's faster to scroll through. You also get a couple of pre-selected widgets at the top and a search bar to quickly bring up specific widgets. It's a lot more efficient and I hope that third-party launchers adopt these changes in the future as well. There's also a new conversations widget, which I don't think it's that useful. All it does is let you see the latest chat from a conversation you're in from some of your messaging apps, including Google Messages, Slack, Telegram, Facebook Messenger, WhatsApp, etc. But if I'm being honest, if it stays and looks this simple, most people will probably not use it. I mean, seriously, it takes up so much space on your home screen and you can literally just check your notification panel whenever you receive a message. When jumping into the settings, design-wise, everything is completely different. It's a lot simpler with just the title of each section. Uh, the menus no longer have small keywords that let you know what's inside of each of them. I can see it being an annoyance to some folks who are new to Android, but for those who've been using Android for years, this probably won't bother you that much, especially since almost everything is still in the same place as before. Each section also has been dropped down to make it easier to use with one hand. Hopefully in the future though, they also do this for other Google apps. The battery and storage sections both have fun new bar indicators and 
in some subsections, the big top of the list category toggles have a new look. Aside from the visual changes, there are also some juicy new features that Google created. Within the gesture section, you'll find a ton of them. There is now a one-handed mode that just like the iPhone brings down half the screen whenever you swipe down on the gesture navigation. To exit, you just swipe up from the bottom or tap anywhere on the top gray area. There's also a new gesture to pull down the notification panel by just swiping down on the nav bar, no matter what app you're in. You just won't be able to enable the new one-handed mode. And even though it's currently not working, the long-awaited rear double tap gesture could come to the pixels. You'll be able to take a screenshot, open Google Assistant, play your pause media, and more just by double tapping the back of your phone. Within the Wi-Fi and Networks menu, a handy feature is that you're able to share Wi-Fi networks using Google's nearby share feature. It may not be as fast as just telling someone the password, but it's a great option if you don't want anyone to know it. Those are all the bigger changes found within Android 12 so far, but there are still a ton of smaller hidden changes that I wanted to show off. Keeping everything a little more uniform, Android 12 now generates splash screens for almost every app that doesn't support one. It'll throw up the app's icon on a black or white background, depending on your set system theme. There's a new overscroll animation when you reach the top or bottom of the screen and try to continue scrolling. It's similar to that of the app's drawer bouncy animation. Before on Android 11, you could only hide the front facing camera on the Pixel 3 XL by filling the status bar with a black background, but it didn't work for the Pixel 5. Now with Android 12, you can hide the hole punch for the Pixel 5 and the Pixel 4a and 4a 5G within the developer options. The pattern unlocking method within the lock screen is a lot thicker now and matches your set accent color. Whenever you press the power button five times, a five second countdown will start to call 911. You can even change the number within the settings. When using picture in picture mode, you can now resize the video by pinching in or out or even double tapping it. Plus you can now hide or stash the video off to the side and bring it back whenever you'd like. Finally, screenshots have been improved a bit. For example, whenever you take one, the share and edit buttons appear a lot faster. You can also dismiss it just by swiping it left or right instead of needing to tap on a small little X. And when you edit the screenshot, you can now add text or emojis and even change the font and then erase them. Those are just of the few of the hundreds of minor changes found within Android 12 and we're only on the developer preview three. There are still four more beta updates set to be released throughout the summer. So I'm very excited to see what Google has in store. On that note, a few more hints were found within the source code that let us know about any possible upcoming features. Just a few days ago, John Prosser from Front Page Tech on YouTube dropped a huge leak of some Google I.O. slides and even a promotional Android 12 video. And from the looks of it, Android is getting a huge visual upgrade. We're talking about new widgets, fancy looking toggles, new UIs for notifications and the volume slider, which I'm grateful for, and a lot more. And even within the leaked video, there's even more crazy new features. There's a new status bar with just a notification count, but then within the lock screen, you can actually see your notification icons. Kind of weird, but I'm thinking that Google will give you the option to choose between a number or actual icons. The Google keyboard and calendar look completely different, and there's just a lot more to unravel. So I'll just link John Prosser's video in the description so that you can see the entire video for yourself. Anyways, the next possible upcoming feature is a new native gaming mode. From the leaked screenshots, it looks like you'll be able to fine tune the performance, have it automatically enable do not disturb mode, lock the screen brightness and auto rotation, and even have a floating toolbar that pops up when you're in the game. The floating toolbar lets you start a screen recording and lets you see your screen's FPS. For now, it's pretty bare bones, but I'm sure Google will spice it up in one of the future beta updates. What I'm also really excited about is that Google will most likely improve the theming system immensely. We're talking about wallpaper based themes where the colors of the settings, notifications, and any other system elements will try to match the colors of your wallpaper, keeping it very uniform. On top of that, from some of the linked screenshots, it's looking like the notifications and quick settings are getting a major revamp with a thicker brightness bar, more extensive quick setting tiles with bigger rounded rectangles, a shortcut to the power menu, and even filling up the entire screen. The lock screen can also change or obtain customization options, things like new lock screen clocks, new unlocking animations, and even the inclusion of smart home controls similar to the power menu. Here's a cool one, face-based auto-rotate. It's a feature that will adjust the auto-rotation based on the angle of your face as you look at the phone. To do this, it will constantly be using your camera though, so it could be a battery drainer. Plus, it may interfere with a new upcoming privacy feature that shows dots or icons in the corner of the screen whenever your camera or microphone is being used. So there's a high chance that the face-based auto-rotate feature could get canned. Speaking of privacy, there could also be two new quick setting tiles, one to disable the camera 
and another one to disable the microphone. For the Pixel Launcher, the search bar will be a lot more universal, extending search results for widgets, contacts, Play Store listings, and even some popular third-party apps that aren't on the Play Store. For notifications, Google is working on adding a third option to its sound settings when you long press it within the notification panel. It'll be called automatic, and by enabling this feature, you're allowing the system to decide if any incoming notifications from an app should make sound or just vibrate. Honestly, this could be a useful feature or an annoying one, depending on how the system determines to alert you. Whenever you open two apps in split screen mode, you'll be able to jump into the recents page and have a pair of apps act as one app. That way you can switch between app pairs or single apps. And finally, Google could make it easier for anyone to install third party app stores to replace the Play Store and make it their default app store. Sort of like choosing a different keyboard, home screen or browser as your default choice. Anyways, those are all the possible upcoming Android 12 features that caught my attention. Trust me, there's more where that came from. If you'd like to see what other features could arrive to Android 12 in a future update, I'll drop a link to an Android Police article where they have a huge list of Android 12 rumors and leaks. Either way, that's every major change and new feature found within Android 12 so far. Again, don't forget to get subscribed with the notification bell turned on because when the first Android 12 beta gets released, I'll be reviewing it right away. Anyways, thank you guys for watching. If you like what you saw, please do me a favor and drop a thumbs up. It really helps out the video get on the YouTube algorithm's radar. Thank you for tuning in and I'll catch you guys in the next one. Kapow!